a chair by the fireside. I'm going to tell you a story, but it's not for the faint of heart. My name is Julia Norton, and you're listening to Dark and Twisty Tales, a weekly telling of the lesser known and more grisly folk stories and fairy tales. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I shall begin. Clever Gretel There was once a cook called Gretel, who wore shoes with red rosettes, and when she went out in them, she turned and twisted about gaily and thought, how fine I am. After her walk, she would take a draught of wine in her light-heartedness, and as the wine gives an appetite, she would then taste some of the dishes that she was cooking, saying to herself, the cook is bound to know how the food tastes. It so happened that one day her master said to her, Gretel, I have a guest coming tonight. Roast me two fowls in your best style. It shall be done, sir, answered Gretel. So she killed the chickens, scalded and plucked them, and then put them on the spit. Towards evening, she put them down to the fire to roast. They got brown and crisp, but still the guest did not come. Then Gretel called to her master. If the guest does not come, I must take the fowls from the fire. But it will be a thousand pities if they're not eaten soon while they're juicy. Her master said, I will go and hasten the guest myself. Hardly had her master turned his back before Gretel laid the spit with the fowls on it on one side and said to herself, This thirsty work standing over the fire so long. Who knows when he will come? I'll go down into the cellar in the meantime and take a drop of wine. She ran down and held a jug to the tap, then said, Here's to your health, Gretel, and took a good pull. Drinking leads to drinking, she said, and it's not easy to give it up. And again she took a good pull. Then she went upstairs and put the fowls to the fire again, poured some butter over them, and turned the spit round with a will. It smelt so good that she thought, there must be something wanting, I must have a taste. And she passed her finger over the fowls and put it in her mouth. Ah, how good they are. It's a sin and a shame that there is nobody to eat them. She ran to the window to see if her master was coming with the guest, but she saw nobody. Then she went back to the fowls again and thought, One wing is catching a little. Better to eat it, and eat it I will. So she cut it off and ate it with much enjoyment. When it was finished, she thought, The other must follow, or the master will notice something is wanting. When the wings were consumed, she went back to the window again to look for her master. But no one was in sight. Who knows, she thought. I dare say they won't come at all. They must have dropped in somewhere else. Then she said to herself, Now, Gretel, don't be afraid. Eat it all up. Why should the good food be wasted? When it's all gone, you can rest. Run and have another drink and then finish it up. So she went down to the cellar, took a good drink, and contentedly ate up the rest of the fowl. When it had all disappeared and still no master came, Gretel looked at the other fowl and said, Where one is gone, the other must follow. What is good for one is right for the other. If I have a drink first, I shall be none the worse. So she took another hearty pull at the jug, and then she sent the other fowl after the first one. In the height of her enjoyment, the master came back and cried, Hurry, Gretel, the guest is just coming. Very well, sir, I'll soon have it ready, answered Gretel. Her master went to see if the table was properly laid and took the big carving knife with which he meant to cut up the fowls to sharpen it. In the meantime, the guest came and knocked politely at the door. Gretel ran to see who was there and seeing the guest, she put her finger to her lips and said, Be quiet and get away quickly. If my master catches you, it will be the worse for you. 
He certainly invited you to supper, but only with the intention of cutting off both your ears. You can hear him sharpening his knife now. The guest heard the knife being sharpened and hurried off down the steps as fast as he could. Gretel ran with great agility to her master, shrieking, A fine guest you've invited indeed! Why, what's the matter, Gretel? What do you mean? Well, she said, he's taken the two fowls that I just put up on the dish and run off with them. Well, that's a clever trick, said her master, regretting his fine fowls. If only he'd left one for me, so I had something to eat. He called out to him to stop, but the guest pretended not to hear. Then he ran after him, still holding the carving knife, and cried, Only one! Only one! Meaning that the guest should leave him one fowl. But the guest only thought that he meant he was to give him one ear, and he ran as if he was pursued by fire, and so took both his ears safely home. Thank you for listening to Dark and Twisty Tales. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe on iTunes, rate, review and share with all your friends. You can also get more information about me, Julia Norton, at julianorton.com. So, until the next time, bye. Bye.